what is going on guys uh happy holidays i'm up in brooklyn for the holiday standing in front of uh greenpoint fish my uh restaurant here in brooklyn and uh one of the things i haven't been able to go out to do any fishing but i uh, just picked up some arctic char a little bit of caviar and we're gonna make something special i'm actually gonna have my mom cook so that should be uh really fun. I didn't want to film inside just because these guys are really busy with uh, holiday orders. All right, so I'm not going to tell you what Mama Clams is making, but it's one of my favorite things. She doesn't make it that long, uh, often. It is labor intensive, um, tends to only make it on holidays when me and my sister ask her if she can make it. So what I'm going to make is actually something to go on top of it. And I went to Greenpoint Fish and picked up this beautiful, beautiful piece of Arctic char. Uh, Arctic char is going to be similar to salmon, steelhead trout, kind of in that family. And what we're gonna do is make gravlax. Now I've done this before with bluefish. I'll actually link that video. Um, it's really simple. It's just, you can get crazy with it. I'm doing it as simple as possible. Just dill, salt, and brown sugar. Now the only trick to it is weighing it out. And even this, I don't know how important it is, but it's one thing, I never measure anything, so why not? Let's. Uh, for once measure something. Okay, so my fish is 1.5. One pound, one and a half pounds, sorry. One and a half pounds. So what I need is equal parts salt and sugar, half that weight. So, what is that? 0.75. So I need 0.33. <laughs> 0 0.33 sugar, 0.33 salt. And now I'm going to add this entire head of dill. And we're going to chop that up nice and fine. And you could add other aromatics to this. Uh, some people do blueberries. Some people do gin, vodka. There's a lot of recipes you can look up. All right. Now with just my hand, stir it up. You know something's good when you haven't cooked it or anything else and it already smells good? Like if you make like filling for pasta or whatever and it smells good before you ever cook it, that, that's when you know, you know it's good. This smells delicious already between the brown sugar and the dill. All right. So nice and mixed up, everything incorporated. And if you also notice, I had this uh, uh, Arctic char out in the fridge open to let it dry just a little bit. Um, I had it open for a couple of hours, but we'll pack. So the other important part to this is what I'm about to do now. I'm going to cover it. It doesn't have to be airtight. You want air to get in there to help cure the fish, but you just want a guard between another pan. And we put this pan on top and then on top of this pan, I'm sure you got some cans around. Just disperse some cans. You want some uh, weight on there to help press the fish 
and press the moisture out. I'm going to grab a couple more so we got a little bit more equal distribution. But now this is going to go into the fridge for about 24 to 48 hours. I think this is only going to take about 24 hours, so it'll be pretty quick. I will see you in a day. All right, so my grab box is done. I took it out, I rinsed it, it's been two days. It is actually the day after Christmas and I am here with Mama Clams. Happy Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> she is going to make, so there's two things around the holidays that my mother makes that are out of this world. One of them being your chicken liver pate. That's unbelievable. It was good this year. And. <laughs> potato pancakes or potato latkes and I was thinking she can make her potato pancakes and then we can put the grab locks on top and it would go together perfectly so tell me what we have okay we have uh, the recipe first off comes from a German cookbook that I bought probably 40 years ago so uh, I've been making these not every year but uh, pretty much uh, they are potatoes, uh, <laughs> which naturally. <laughs> we have peeled and we have them in water so that yeah. they don't oxidize. So we have seven potatoes peeled and... Medium size and an apple. One apple peeled also in the water so it doesn't oxidize. And actually the apple is a variation. The recipe um, is a traditional recipe and then it has notes to add certain things if you so desire. So I kind of like the idea of the apple and mm -hmm. I put it in there and onion. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to shred those. Yeah, this is the gruesome part of the job. <laughs> um, I know that there's probably a more modern way to do this, but this is the implement that I used to see my mother use and naturally I bought one and have been using it ever since. Potatoes work out okay. Uh, I don't have long fingernails, but when it comes to grating the onion, uh, I have to admit that it makes me cry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sous chef today, so you tell so me. So you get the onion? <laughs> sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> anyway, here we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we should be standing in potato sacks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, this part of the recipe is probably the one I look forward to the least because it's grating an onion. And by the time I'm finished grating the onion, my eyes are burning and tearing. But uh, I think when I get to that point, I might hand it off to the chef. That sous chef, you're the chef today. <laughs> I thought the potatoes were the hard part. This looks worse. You can really taste the pain in this recipe. No. And actually it depends on the onion too. Of course. Some of them I've, I've done one year where my eyes didn't tear at all. Mm -hmm. So, which made me think that maybe it wasn't really an onion. <laughs> <laughs> so after all the grating. Um, my eyes are tearing, just so you know who grated the onion. <laughs> she yells at me when the camera's off. She hits me. Oh, don't believe him. <laughs> don't believe him. So after everything's been grated, the onion and the, uh, all the potatoes, there's moisture, there's water in there, and that has to be taken away. So the next process is to extract the solid from the liquid, but 
in the liquid is the potato starch, which will settle to the bottom of this bowl. So you have a mesh strainer. <laughs> and a mesh strainer, very fine, because you don't want any of the potato to go through there, just the not after fluid. Not the work we did. No, <laughs> certainly not. So, actually, I think you and I... Yeah. And then you could just press, and this is a soup ladle, um, or anything, a wooden spoon, just continually press to try to get as much of the liquid out of the solid. Alright, so you pushed all the liquid out there. Yeah. And now that goes. Ready? Okay. Well, maybe we didn't get all of it. <laughs> well, I don't think you could get all but, of it. Yeah. That's a lot. Shave it up. <laughs> and I dumped a little in the sink by accident, too. So uh. we lost the starch. So if they're terrible, it's my fault. <laughs> Alright, it's dripping a little bit, but not that much. That's but, okay. Try to get as much of it out as you can, because it does have a bearing on the uh, the end product. <laughs> so now this has to sit, right? Yeah, the starch that's in the potato uh, will now separate from the fluid, uh, the liquid, and that settles to the bottom. So we give it a couple of minutes for it to do that and then spill off the liquid and the starch will be all caked at the bottom of this bowl. All right, see you in about five minutes. <laughs> stuff is no joke, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's what keeps those pancakes together. Can't see what I'm doing. The bowl is too big. <laughs> if I fling it at you, please excuse me. <laughs> no malice intended. <laughs> okay. All right, so now what? Now we add the uh, ingredients, which you so conveniently have <laughs> measured here. out for me. Okay. So I have salt, white pepper, and baking soda. Or is it baking powder? Uh, it's baking powder. Baking powder? Yeah. All right. Mix those in. And then here we have just a tablespoon of matzo meal, cracker meal. Uh, it said you could use flour, cracker meal. We had matzo meal. We're, we're covering all the holidays here. <laughs> it's the day after Christmas, it's Kwanzaa, New Year's is coming up. Hanukkah just ended, and it's right? And this evening is the last evening of Hanukkah, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then two eggs that are separated, so I'm going to throw the yolks in. And now the egg whites, what do the egg whites have to be? Well, let's refer back to the... Uh, Instructions, please. Well, they have to be they whipped. They have to be whipped. Yeah. Yeah. Guess who gets to do that? <laughs> <laughs> the strong arm man. <laughs> <laughs> so it said to whisk them until stiff. And I'm no baker, but I know that that takes a while. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Maybe a little more. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's good. That's a stiff peak. I don't know if you can see on there. If you can't, mind your business. It's a <laughs> stiff peak. We're Take done. my word for it. It is. <laughs> okay. Am I putting it all at once? Um, I think it slowly gets folded in, okay. so I guess put them in there and I'll... There, I'll just hold that, you okay. scoop it well. Oh, 
Well, I think we'll put it all in. <laughs> Do you watch Hits Creek? No. No? There's an episode where a recipe calls the fold something in and there. Everyone goes crazy about how do you fold something into it. <laughs> literally, they took it literal. <laughs> yeah. So you put, uh, we don't have quite an inch of oil in here. Um, it's peanut oil that I had, but any type of oil for frying or sauteing. So before you attempt to make a standard size one, to just throw a little bit in there to check that the oil is done that the oil is ready to accept it. And uh, that one looks pretty neat. All right. <laughs> looks like a little bug, actually. <laughs> anyway, so we're ready to go. And then we have a rack here, a paper towel to put them on to get the excess oil out. Actually, if you want to be to form and make them perfectly round, please feel free to do that. <laughs> uh, I don't think the shape matters much, the taste is more important. <laughs> sure it stick. This is my Gravlox that I made. So that cured for a little over 24 hours. Super easy process. Like I said, that is linked. I will put the link to the one that I did with the bluefish. So I haven't even tried it yet, but that looks, uh, looks good. Taste that? Yeah. Me too. Yeah? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so now I have here sour cream and then we have a little bit, we got fancy. I got a little bit of uh, sturgeon caviar. So I'm gonna slice a little bit. My mom's gonna dress one of these up. Now you could also put applesauce. Usually we put applesauce on. We're not, we're not this fancy. This is just this is a special occasion. Actually, Yes, potato pancakes had to have applesauce on them, not sour cream, but the sour cream is good. <laughs> and I'm sure this will be even better. That is, that is beautiful. <laughs> All right, dress one up. You, I thought you were going to put the lox on first. I'm going to go dollop the sour cream. Oh, okay. Sorry. Lox, and then... <laughs> yeah, you're I sous chef now. That's it. You've been, you've been demoted. <laughs> Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah. Just do the one. Okay. And then I'll do close up. Go ahead. Oh, okay. You want me to do this? <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I told you. We switched now. I need a fork then. I don't want to touch that with my hands. <laughs> I'll prop her up Voila. Mm. Okay. Ah. Wash that down a little bit. <laughs> I'll get you another spoon to do too. Two. <clears throat> okay, lovely. Oh, wait, wait. We're not finished, evidently. It's looking pretty nice. Oh, oh. oh, okay. I mean, if we're going fancy, we might know, as well, yeah. you know, might as well go all out here. Lovely. All right. Okay. All right, I'm going to do one up close now.
All right. They look yeah. beautiful. They do look beautiful. Yeah. I know you're going civilized with a fork. Yes, and you're going to uh, be street smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's delicious. I know there are TikTok recipes and all that stuff for latkes where it takes two minutes. I know that this is really involved, but the difference, I mean, that is, that's a cloud. They've, I was just going to say, they look like they are heavy, but when you bite into it, mm -mm. That as Will said, it's like a cloud. They yeah. are soft and light and tasty. Mm. That is good. They don't need the growl hops <laughs> or the cap. <laughs> the caviar is just decadent, but <laughs> wow. I gotta save that for later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just light, airy, I mean, folding in the egg. It's a lot of work, but it is worth it. All those years you did this without help of me or Jen. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for always having nice things to say about my mom. Thank you. And uh, happy holidays to everyone. I hope everyone had a safe, healthy holiday. And we have actually my sister and my brother-in-law here, so we're going to make the rest of these sit down and eat and enjoy each other's company. Thank you for cooking. You. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he cooked Christmas dinner and it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Happy holidays to all healthy and safe. These are good. Mm. All right. Yeah, I forgot how good they are. <laughs>